We can get the door, John. I can hear you all the way around. All right, welcome. This is the Genesee County Compassion Club show. I'm flying solo today. My name is Jeremy. I'm from the club to you. I uh, hope you guys are listening. I've got the call-in number posted here so I can read it. It's 810-208-1854 if you want to call into Flint Talk Radio and talk to me live on the podcast today. I'll answer your questions, or at least I'll try to. Uh, but hey, I want to say thanks for joining me. Right? Get some fist up in the air. This thing will stop throbbing someday, but I get the cast off on Friday. All right, I got some announcements I want to share with you. I know that DJ Short was in the club yesterday, uh, and I know that he's going to be in the club tomorrow. So as far as announcements goes, and my announcement compadre, Chad, he's probably at the club right now looking for me, but uh, the podcast starts at 3, so here I am. But uh, anyways, Chad's going to be at the club looking for me. (laughs) DJ Short's going to be at the club tomorrow. So um, if you can get out there tomorrow, if you haven't seen DJ, go talk to him. I mean, he's a good guy to talk to. He's full of knowledge. And I believe we've got another class coming up with DJ at the end of the month. Um, Tell you what, best thing to do if you want to know all about the club's announcements, you want to know about the dates, you want to sign up for class, whatever, go to the website. It's www.genesee3c.com. And uh, you can get all the information that you need there. My man JR has got it hooked up, dialed in. And all the information that you need is on the website. So check it out, and if you have questions, just call the club. It's 810-250-0054, I think. Um, hey, we got some interesting news today I want to share with you. We've got some different things going on in the world. Uh, I know we got some other interesting things happening down at the Compassion Club. I know that there's some, I don't know, smelled like paint in there today. Something's going on down there. But uh, at any rate, it seems like there's been some killer food going on at the club lately and i just want to say thank you to whoever keeps bringing that food in and i I gotta believe it's got to be a conglomerate of memberships so uh members thank you dude you guys cook better than nine out of ten restaurants in this town and uh that's a fact so will you are the bean master and uh brandon dude your pork there's not too many places around that have pork like that so uh kudos to the members and I'm sure I'm forgetting some of you other fantastic chefs out there. Uh, truly, we've got a membership full of talent and, and capability. There's just no question. I mean, and the food was just outstanding. So, hey, not making any promises that there's going to be another potluck this Saturday. But maybe. I don't know. I just walk in. There's food. I'm like, hey, grab a plate and eat, right? So uh, you can do the same thing. The club's a great place to be at. And our members, they just keep giving. So what are you going to do? Eat the food, man. Um, thank you for bringing it in. Hey, we got a couple other things going on right now. I want to let you guys know that we did make a donation to the Humane Society last week in the name of the G3C from them to, or from you to them, excuse me. Uh, and again, that was to the Genesee County Animal Control. I keep saying Humane Society, but that's not what it is. It's Animal Control. Uh, our members conglomerately donated, I believe over a thousand dollars uh, to the animal control of Genesee County. So we had a little friendly package get delivered down there last week, and uh, that was from you guys. And you guys are out there doing it and helping us save maybe some animals, you know, spreading a little humanity to the lesser creations of life. And I want to say thank you because uh, that's a beautiful thing. And um, thank you. Anyways, I know we made some other donations. I know we got a soup kitchen thing coming up here. Uh, You guys were serving food last week. Uh, I heard there was handmade, hand-tossed pizza being thrown out to the guests there at the soup kitchen last week. And a special thank you to that crew. Uh, You guys going down there, bringing the ingredients, hand-tossing it, preparing it, cooking it, serving it, cleaning it up afterwards. Uh, I don't know too many other volunteer groups that have ever even thought of that, let alone executed. So, again, kudos. I mean, I have nothing but gracious warm regard for our membership i mean i just i don't know how to say thank you enough or mean it enough because you guys are a shining example of what this is all about and if we continue to do these types of things then it's going to change people's minds when they think about people who use cannabis as medicine they're not going to see you as a second-rate citizen they're not going to see you as a detriment to society they're going to see you as like an extremely loving gracious person that you are so thanks for proving them wrong and keep doing it all right um, Chad, if you are in the club, you need to get your ass to the podcast. <laughs> if you're not, I don't know where you're at then. Party on. 
Uh, anyways, news. Guys, I don't have a lot of news for you. There is one important thing, though, I need to cover with you this week because today is April 3rd, and as of April 1st, the laws that passed back in December go into effect April 1st. So they're in effect now. So the first thing you need to do is understand that when you're transporting your medication, it needs to be inaccessible from you and everybody else in the vehicle. Inaccessible. You're going to have to figure out what that means, and if you want more advice, call an attorney. All right? Read the law. Next thing is outdoor facilities. They are licensed. I don't know, let me take that back. It's not that they're licensed. It's that they're legal, which, you know, prior to this law change in December, outdoor growing was legal anyways. It was just a little sketchy. Now, it's still sketchy, just not quite as much. If you go to the state's website, michiganlegislature.gov, you can read the bill for yourself. You can read the three-quarter page length description of what an outdoor facility is according to the state's new law. And then you can go ahead and figure out what you want to start building. It's March. Uh, it's time to get things ready for the outdoor season if that's what you do. And uh, if you want to do it legal, if you want to do it right, I recommend you read that law and uh, follow through to a T. Now, one of the important things about that is growing outdoors, you need to make sure that it is safe. So before you even consider following the law, you need to sit back, look at your situation, and decide if this is the right choice for you outside of the parameters of a legal conversation. You need to find out if your family is going to be in jeopardy because you got marijuana plants in the backyard. You need to figure out if your crop is going to be in jeopardy because it might not even make it through without rippers getting to it. There's a lot of things that could happen that have nothing to do with the police. So consider those first, then go ahead and read the law and figure out if you want to garden outdoors. All right. As far as particulars go, I'm going to tell you this. Read the law. It is very particular as far as what you can can't do outdoors. It leaves some things open to interpretation. And really, it doesn't really clear up the uh, muddy water much for me, in my opinion. But hey, like I said, read the law. So if you want to grow outdoors, just know it is a possibility. It is legal, but you need to read the law. Uh, so do that first before you put your back into it. Start tilling the ground and find out it wasn't worth your while. Okay? Next law change that you need to recognize is in place starting April 1st. So we got transportation, we got growing outdoors. The next thing is you might notice at the state's website, there's new forms. That's right, new forms for patients and caregivers now available on the state's website as of April 1st. Here's what you need to understand. If you're sending in a form to the state as of now, you need to send in the new form. So let's say you go to the docs tomorrow and the doc pulls out the old form. Take that form and throw it in the trash and tell the doctor to get up to date and print a new one. The reason you want to do that, number one, is because of the fact that registrations are now good for two years. So you're not going to need to go back to the doctor next year. You're not going to need to send a new form in next year. If you do it right first time, you're going to be good for two years instead of one. So that's why, number one, you don't want to use an old form. Get your money's worth. Get two years registered instead of one. Uh, you don't have to go back. The fee hasn't changed with the state. It's just simple. It's two years now instead of one. So use the new form. Get two years. Get it done right. Here he is. Yeah. What's up, brother? Hey, what's hey, going on? Better late than never. Actually, I own those new clocks. The, the kind that don't keep time? Exactly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's, it must be a George Bush nu nuclear. <laughs> what, how does he say it? Yeah, he's <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't nuclear. It was nuclear. I don't know. He had some. Anyways, thanks for joining the podcast, Chad. Yeah, how's it going? Buddy? Oh, good. Yeah. Good. I already blew through your announcements, so that's cool. That's cool. But I was talking to him about the the laws that changed uh -huh. and some of the things they got to follow. But I knew I was forgetting some kind of an important announcement. So before I get back to that, tell them about the party, man. Oh yeah, four twenty celebration, guys. It is time again. Uh, it's that time of year. This is going to be our fourth annual 420 celebration. Uh, it's four parties. So you know what happens as parties go on, they get better and better and better. So they do. This is just, you know, yeah, that's just from planning. But this party right here is going to be one of the most off-the-chain parties for the 420 going on right now. Uh, we have everything from, let's see, I know we went with a basketball shootout, which everyone's really excited about. I know a lot of people in our club love basketball shootouts. Uh, we have the joust bounce back again. You, know, you and me did that for a minute. Uh, we had a nice little video of you and me doing that. Yeah. I think I actually slipped and fell and busted my butt in the middle of rain on that one. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of other stuff going on. We have our twist off. We're cash cube. Have, yes, the cash cube is amazing. Yep, and the member 420 card as yep. always auctioned. Yep. I know we got special speakers and there's going to yep. be all kinds of vendors and yeah, all sorts of stuff. Lots of stuff to do. But we also have a uh, first annual 
What? G3C Cup. What? Yeah. There's going to be a cup. It's going to be a cup. There's going to be prizes. Wow. Yeah, there's more rules. Many buds. One for, cup. For more rules of the, of the cup and explanations, you can go ask any of our wonderful staff at the club right now. They all know about it. Uh, plus, we're also going to have a fourth annual twist off. I know that would be like a, a G3C Cannabis Cup. That's what it's supposed to be. What? That's what I was told. Tested. What? Huh? Yeah, we don't go with just opinions here. We're going to actually rack you through the machine and find out just how good you are. We already had the twist off. I mean, so I had the twist off. Why not go one step that? farther? Fourth for, annual twist off. But I'm saying why not go one step farther here and have oh, yeah, the whole cup. For you guys out there who don't know what the twist off is, oh. this is a caregiving patient competition. To see who can provide the best form of the doobie. The fastest, okay. most creative, and best overall. That's right. Three categories yep. to compete in. You can compete in all three if you think you're that talented. <laughs> uh, or just one. It doesn't matter. we got the fingers be sore. Fastest, <laughs> most creative. Yep. And best overall. And best overall. And for most creative, it does have to be smokable. Yeah. <laughs> it has to actually work. Yeah. So if you use, you know, like epoxy in your most creative... Uh, <laughs> Like I'm going to recommend you don't smoke that. Okay, so make sure it is actually uh, ingestible. All I, right? I will give them a, a buyer, though, if yeah. they want to make like a statue of you uh, or me in honor of us. A statue? <laughs> Just because I found that flat. Don't smoke the plaster of Paris. So I would definitely give right, you like, a high hey, five for Back that to one. the show here. <laughs> this is uh, tickets are 20 bucks in advance for the 420 party with $25 at the door. It includes food, fun, entertainment for the whole day. This is a family, fun, friendly mm-hmm. event. Uh, in do- indoors in the club yep. is where you, you know, if you're a card holder, you're allowed to go in and obviously utilize the club. If you are not a medical marijuana card holder in Michigan, you can still come to this party. Yep. The entire outdoors of our back area, mm-hmm. it will be tented off like, you know, the Cirque du Soleil. And that's where we have bands and, and food and, I mean, all kinds of stuff. That's for you guys to come and enjoy so you don't have to be a card holder so that you can come have a good time. And then at the same time, you might actually get a little bit of education because we're yep. going to provide that too. So you find out, why do all these people have medical marijuana cards? Uh, we're going to be able to tell you why. And so if you want to get educated, if you want to have fun, this is a good time to come out. Cheap event, 20 bucks per person. You get food, fun, mm-hmm. entertainment. Uh, you know, and we, when we provide things like the cash cube, the basketball shootout, that's included in the price. We're yep. not going to go charge you an extra $5 to uh, get in the bounce joust or whatever. It's all included, Okay. So this is a family, fun, friendly event that we do as a celebration and as a thank you to our members and to all the people that are in medical marijuana in Michigan. So we invite you and your family to come on out uh, on April 20th and spend the day with us. All right? So, yes, that means you guys right now listening to the you club. Guys. You guys bring your friends. I know you guys all have people around here that have not been able to come to the club because they're not patients. Well, now you can bring them to the area, let them enjoy the festivities outside, and actually share a fun day with them. Yeah. And 420, I know, it's always been a day where there's not a lot of stuff for people to do. No. And I think this 420 is a Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So yes. you got a good excuse. You don't have to go to work. Um, we usually bring in space heaters and stuff in case it's cold. Mm-hmm. You want to wear boots because it's usually rainy. You know, it's April. But uh, come on out. Let's have a good time. All right? Definitely. All right. Back to the law stuff. That's yes. what I was beating them up about before you got in yeah, here. Uh, How's that going? Well, I, I think they're ready for a little more beating. All right. All right. So we talked about transportation. Mm-hmm. You got to transport it correctly now. This is all went into effect just two days ago, so mm-hmm. I want to talk about it. Yep. Uh, we got the fact that your cards are good for two years now if you use the new form. Yay! Okay. Uh, you don't go to the doctor. You don't pay extra. Mm-hmm. And then we also talked about what were we talking about? Oh, outdoor grows. You yes. Can, you can you know you can do that as you could before. Yep. It's just now there's a bit of, a bit more of a definition provided as to how to do that. Yes. So a couple other things people have been asking about that aren't really that significant. One of the things that passed is that you know you gotta have this bona fide doctor patient relationship. And what you need to understand is that you know 99% of you out there that already had cards before also had a bona fide doctor relationship. Yep. So don't expect things to change a whole lot at the doctor. If you're going back to the same doctor you've been going to, probably not a whole lot's gonna change. Now if you're going to a new doctor or you're a new patient. You might have to go you know, back for another mm-hmm. visit so that you can make sure the doctor is doing that proper evaluation and having that bona fide relationship with you. But all in all, don't let that scare you off. It's just part of the process. Mm-hmm. It's them covering their butts and doing the same thing for you to make sure that that choice is the right choice for you. Yep. All right? So it's in your best interest, but don't shy away. Don't think that, it, you know, oh, well, now I'm not going to get qualified because he told me I had to come back. <laughs> just go through the process, be honest, provide documentation, Give them documentation, mm-hmm. allow them to do their part, 
And then I think you're going to find that the process is going to move along just fine. And the other thing is, realize that by going through this now, you're only going to have to do this once every two years. Yep. So, and now I know myself personally, I've been preparing for this. Um, with my patients, I like to get all their paperwork and keep all that in records. Uh, I like to make sure that I know where their medical records are at, whether they have a copy of their own that they've taken the doctors, or what I've been finding out now is like I've, I've found a doctor that I like and I've taken my patients there. And what I found now is that you just keep going back to the same clinic. Like yeah, you said, it's just like, well, you're establishing a relationship. Yep. You go simple. back to that one. You, know. you make sure they have your paperwork on file. You make sure they keep all of there, and you keep on going. And that right there is completely what they're looking for. You know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. Better said. You know, but the word bona fide mm -hmm. really just means that we have a relationship. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a fancy way of saying, yeah, we know each other. We have some sort of transaction or agreement or binding something. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very general statement. But what the state did is it kind of narrowed it down a little bit to mm -hmm. say, well, it's at least got to have this. Yep. So, again, if, if you end up having to make two trips to the doctor, don't sweat it. Just do it. And if you've already been going to the same place, it's probably not going to be an issue. And you should be used to this anyway. Most doctors, uh, if you went to any other doctor before, a responsible doctor should have given you, if they ever gave you prescriptions at all, should have you come back within a couple of weeks for a checkup. That's what a responsible doctor should do to start with. So this yeah. is no different than that. Um, Sometimes, you know, that, that follow-up call is just a phone call. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be, well, we've got to come back in. Check your blood pressure. I always think that's the dumbest thing. You yep. know, like every time I go into the doctor's office to get to check my blood pressure, it's like, well, if there was a problem with it, I'd probably tell you or I'd be dead. You know what I mean? Like, I'm here to get my arm fixed. What the? F Anyways, <laughs> you get my point. Mm -hmm. All right. Other laws that changed. I, I think there was some other insignificant changes. Tell anyone. Yeah, actually. Well, tell it's, me, not, it's not insignificant. But I don't it's... want to call it insignificant. Actually, if you notice on the yep. new form, the new form is very very specific about that whole felony thing uh -huh. and it lists right down there exactly you know all the different kinds of felonies you could have and you check off the box for you know does this or does this not apply all i can tell you is if you're concerned if you have a previous felony on record and you're wondering is this considered one of those violent ones or non-violent does it qualify me or do i not qualify mm -hmm. anymore you need to look at the new application form don't wait until it's the day to renew your app if you're a caregiver mm -hmm. Don't wait. Print it out now. Check it out. And maybe you need to get to work on getting that expunged. I can't tell you what to do. But all I can tell you is print the now, new application form out. Now, what did you say there? So if I had, just say, I was someone that had a felony. Yeah. And I don't make the checkbox there. You're saying I could take a sponge to it? Well, let's say, for instance, you had a harmful... I mean, what was that word? You, I mean, I don't know what that is. All right, well, you're going to get it removed off your record. Oh, I see that. Now, now good I point. know that. Well, it's just funny. I was in the store the other day, <laughs> and the gentleman there mentioned that he had a felony, um, and he, he was trying to insinuate or say that, you know, his because he'd served his time, mm -hmm. that the felony had been removed from his record. And that's not true. What happens is, is, you know, you get a felony, you go do your time, you pay your fine, you do your community service, and then... It's over with, right? You're a free parole. man. Well, and let's say you finish your parole. Right. It's all done. Yep. Okay? You've gone through the process. It's over with. It's forever you, in your it, record, The though. felony is still on your record, and mm. you are still a felon. Now, most people would understand that, but some people don't. Mm. And what you have to do is after you've completed all of that, you're completely done, okay? No more service, no more books, no more fees, no more nothing. Then you can go try to get it removed from your record. And that removal from your record is what we call expunging it. So not only have you done your time, done your time for your crime, whatever, mm -hmm. but we've also gone back. You've been such a good boy now that we're going to actually just pretend it never happened. So now you get to vote again. You could own a firearm. Uh, you could be a caregiver. You have to pay for this, don't you? Well, you're not going to get it. It's not going to just come off automatically. It's going to come off because you've been a good citizen You've done your time. There's been time since you did your time. Mm -hmm. You get my point? It's a process that you're going to have to go through to even qualify. Once you do that, then you go hire an attorney to complete the process, okay? It's kind of like if I said, well, I want to get married. You know, well, I, I can say, well, I married somebody, but until I pay the license fee and file it, I'm not legally married, okay? And if getting a felon off your record is the same type of thing. Like, yeah, you did your time. You've been a good person since then. You you know whatever decent society person citizen, and you should have it removed. Okay, but you got to go through the process, and unfortunately, it's probably going to cost you you know maybe two, three, four thousand dollars, 
and you're gonna have to have an attorney help you with it. The American process. It's just the American process, that's right. <laughs> so complete the American process if you're one of those fellas, get it done. Mm -hmm. And you know, if being a caregiver is important to you, if that's your livelihood, well then that's just the cost of doing business. If it's not that important to you, well then hey, just be a patient. Patients can still be patients. Yep. You can be uh, you have as many felonies as you want, doesn't even matter what kind of felonies it is. And you can still be a patient, you know, and, and that's that's a God given right right there. If you're yes. sick, you should be able to have medication. Even if you are a murderer. Nope. You know what I mean? So I mean we don't deny people in prison medical care. Um, some would argue against that. But anyways, uh <laughs> You get the point. You're going to need mm -hmm. to get it expunged. If, you, if, you, if you're worried about it, if you think, hey, I got a felony. I don't know if it's the kind of felony that's going to get me disqualified from being a caregiver. Print the form out, and then you'll know. Okay? Sounds good. Other than that, there's not a lot, Chad. I mean, it's the bona fide thing. It's the transportation, two years, outdoor grow, and the felony. That was really the gist of what they passed in December, and it went into effect April 1st. Okay. So, you know, technically, there's some people out there right now and this is the funny, oh. this, this is a loophole. Let me, let me get to this Sorry. real quick. Yep. This is a funny loophole in law, folks. Think about this, all right? How many felons do you think right now, the 75,000 or 100,000 caregivers that there are in Michigan right now, how many of those do you think have felonies that are going to fall into that category? They are considered harmful or drug-related, whatever. You don't qualify anymore, right, as of April 1st. So my question is, is the state sending out letters? Are they going back through the background checks to find out who does and who does qualify? And I get you, the answer is no, they're not. So even by law right now, the state would be violating its own laws because they didn't go take away somebody's caregiver status because they do have a harmful felony, and they're not going to go spend the money to do due process to actually remove them. So could you sue the state for possibly endangering our citizens? Even though we're not... Well, you certainly wouldn't want to do that. You'd be kind of justifying why they need the law, which is stupid. I don't think you need the law. Yeah, I don't think you yeah, need bad it. idea. But they're slipping, you know. Well, suing the state's probably never a good idea. Yeah, true. <laughs> You're probably going to lose. I'm that just sucks. guessing. <laughs> It'd be so nice just one day be able to sue the state. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to yeah. sue the government? You know what I mean? But uh, one day. good luck with that. One day. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> I mean, I probably won't lie, but one day. Yeah, that's like when you're 10 and you're like, I'm going to divorce my mom and dad. Have you seen Terminators? What? Have you seen the movie Terminator? Yeah, which um, one? All of them. Yeah. All Eventually, of them. it could happen. Someone will definitely sue the government and then the world will come chaos and then our toasters will be killing people. All right. <laughs> I'm just joking. Chad <laughs> likes to watch The Matrix on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for the last stuff. Um, oh, was there one more part, though, about that? that I remember there was... No, it can't be more. No, it wasn't part... It wasn't another... It's enough Another law. law. It was part the of the law with the two-year program. I'm getting the law. Did you remember the part? Just because I know a few people I know that came to the circumstance that they're like, oh, I'm going to leave my card right before it expires, like 10, 15 days before it expires. Well, here's the thing. I remember reading in there that right now their card is supposed to get to you yes right away. But if they do not and your card lapse, and say you have your paperwork in your hand and your card that you have in your pocket is no longer good, wasn't there a section in there that said that you were no longer protected by paperwork unless you have your card? No, don't scare people with that propaganda nonsense. But that was in there. Don't scare people with that propaganda nonsense. I'm just making sure that was nothing bad. There, there is a section in the law they tried to slip in there, but if you read the language right. that it's putting in there, it's saying that you're not going to be covered by certain sections of the defense. All right, cool. Okay? So you do need to go get your card, folks. All right? Mm -hmm. And walking around with your paperwork is not a good thing. We don't encourage that. But it is all you have until the state sends you yep. what it is they're supposed to give you. Okay? And they did try to swing something in there that's going to try to screw with people. Right. All right? But the bottom line is, folks, if you've gone to the doctor, you've done what you're supposed to, you filled out the form correctly, you sent it in, and you have your proof, mm -hmm. you're probably going to be okay. Yes. All right? So, I didn't mean to scare anyone. I just yeah, know that part was The problem there. Is, is that people get those things confused, and then it creates all kinds of... I've heard actually a lot of people ask me about it. That's why I was kind of asking yeah. about it. And it's they're getting the thing confused with a law, a proposal law, and then a court case. Gotcha. So it's like a blending of confusion to get more confused. Cool. So scratch that, guys. But don't do that. <laughs> but get your paperwork sent in on time. Don't delay. And when you do have paperwork, if that's what you're using to protect yourself, you better have proof it was sent in. You better have proof mm. that you've got complete copies. It's not, you know, half a page of this and wadded up, spit wad that and... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you got to show due diligence that you're on the ball. And, and basically, you have to understand that 
you're talking to a police officer in that situation, mm -hmm. and you're going to try to explain to that police officer that you're more on the ball than the state is, and it's the state's fault why you're currently in violation of what he thinks is the rules. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty tough argument. you got to put yourself <laughs> in that place right now. You're telling a cop that the state doesn't know what they're doing. Okay? Now, if most cops would probably go, yeah, you're right. But he's not going to do that while you're pulled over on the side of the road smelling like weed. Okay? He's going to thump you on the head and tell you the state is perfect and you're a slave. Now, shut up. Okay? So don't do that. Have your ducks in a row. Here, here's my pull out a manila folder or a binder or something. Have your crap in order, folks. You're carrying a controlled, federally illegal substance. This is not a joke, and it is serious. Yep. And this is medication that is used for serious conditions. So treat it with the respect that it deserves. You are not a second-class citizen. You're, a, in my opinion, you're like a citizen with an extra gun in your pocket because you've got this license to do something that most people can't. Mm -hmm. So take that as a privilege. Treat it like one. It's a God-given right. It's not a privilege. But treat it like a privilege, okay? And that'll help you if you do get into that kind of situation. Here, here, look, Mr. Officer. I got my green card. You can see it was mailed out a month ago. You know, it's, it's stamped that I got it back five days later. You know, I got the card that I got yep. back. I got my paperwork. I got my copies of my IDs in here. This is my patient's ID copy. I mean, it is complete. Probably going to impress him. Yeah, you're, gonna, <laughs> you're trying to impress him. Because, again, you're trying to argue that the state doesn't know what it's doing. Mm -hmm. And you do. So if you pull your stuff out and you don't know what you're doing, you just lost your argument. Thanks. You know what I mean? So you have your stuff in a row, and I don't think a cop's going to give you a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's kind of like I had a situation the other day, license plate. I had a paper plate. <laughs> Paper plate's expired, and I don't have my license plate. So what am I going to do? Huh? You know what I mean? If I get pulled over. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what I did is I had my RD-108. I had my purchase form with me. I had my title I already got from the mail. You know what I mean? I had everything that I needed with me in case I did get pulled over. And I'd be like, sir, I didn't get my plate yet. But look, here's all my stuff. And he'd go, oh, yeah, this guy didn't steal this car. Here you go. Have a nice day. And that's what they're probably going to do for you if you've got your paperwork. Oh, yeah, he is a real patient. No, he wasn't smoking while he was rolling down the road. Okay, cool. Have a nice day. It's the way it should be. But that's only going to happen if you're doing what you're supposed to and you show due diligence. Yep. So if somebody's going to screw up, let it be the state. If you don't plan ahead, you plan to fail. Something like that. My grandfather used to always say. It's a good one. It is. All right. <laughs> well, anything cool we can talk about? DJ Short will be back this Thursday. I already said that, dude. Yeah. You were here, okay? Well, I will say. Repeat. Well, not to repeat. repeat. But I will say, I got to sit with DJ Short for about a good four hours yesterday. Oh, wow. Cool dude. <laughs> I didn't even realize what time it was. I you might want to let other people talk to him, dude. <laughs> we were in deep conversations talking about hydrogen and like the creation yeah, of the world and oh, wow. you know, the whole thing. But so while you guys are solving the Earth's problems. You know, or the creation of the Earth, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, the guy is a really cool dude, so please come down, check him out on Thursday. He's going to have his class on the 9th and be back also during that day. Maybe he'll tell you how the Earth was created. <laughs> but at least he knows and talk to him. About <laughs> I didn't know DJ had that kind of info. <laughs> he's been I mean, around. I knew he taught class, but damn. <laughs> he's been around the world, you know. <laughs> the real cool dude, just come down, hang out. And that's all I can say. You know? Absolutely. Yes. Cool. Besides that, it was a beautiful day out right it now. It is. It's still 36 degrees. I know warm temperatures around it's the corner. It's not snowing or raining. It, it flurried this morning. Did it? Where you at? It did. Uh. Yeah. But it's beautiful sunshine out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, These bings. All right. Well, we got to go because Chad's burping it up in here and it smells like booty. Woo. So, uh, just kidding. <laughs> it probably does. It smells like, yeah, he hasn't bing. <laughs> <laughs> booty. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us this week. Appreciate you listening in. Um, any questions you have, feel free to call into the show anytime. It's 810-208-1854 here on FlintTalkRadio.com. I want to show a special gratitude thanks to John back there behind the Woo! glass for being here and making this happen every single week. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for John at Flint Talk Radio. Yes. And uh, the G3C podcast wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Flint Talk. Mm -hmm. So give it up for Flint Talk. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know, do we got true pro wrestling coming in after us today, John? Um, I got a uh, segment they sent me to play. Who, Tom Brokaw? <laughs> no, no uh, Xavier Justice. Xavier Justice? Nice. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So he sent, he, sent, he, sent me a, uh, he sent me a file he wants to play. So Yeah, well, for yeah. you guys out there listening, Xavier Justice is one of the main pure pro wrestling characters. The man is a, a fury yes. of demolition. 
And, uh, you know, he takes pure pro wrestling to a new level of freedom, let me tell you. Yes, he does. So uh, stick around for that segment. But at any rate, check out some of the other podcast shows we have on Flint Talk Radio. Oh, we got a caller. Oh, hello. Let's see if they got anything to say before we sign yeah. out. Saved by the bell. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, we call us at three. Thanks. <laughs> Did you want extra ketchup and mustard with that? Okay. I was like watching the clock, and then I forgot about the clock, and then I'm like, I figured. Where's Jeremy? <laughs> they, they don't want to talk to us, John? Okay. Here, <laughs> you're going to have to. Oh, yeah. Headphones. Check. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Carl. Oh. Yeah, hey, how you doing? Hey, good. Thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? Um, a couple of questions, really. Um, now, as far as your door to your operation... Do you have to have a steel door, or would it be a or what are those stipulations on that? Are you referring to the outdoor facility? No, uh, indoor. There's no rules or any type of description that's ever been given for what an indoor facility looks like. It only simply says it has to be locked. Yep. It does behind behind the locked door. Yeah, it does re- mention in the law comparable to a bedroom or closet but it's only used in a narrative description mm-hmm. so legally it has no bearing the only legal bearing requirement on an indoor facility is the description of an enclosed locked facility so again yeah behind a locked door and, and the main thing is is that no one else can have access to that area except the person that it's designated to that's the key so even if it's in your own home and there's other people in the home that have cards as well. Mm-hmm. If that room is designated to a single person, then only that person in that home should have access to that room. So, you know, i.e. a spouse should not be able to enter into a yep. caregiver's room unless the caregiver is with the spouse who also has a card. You know what yep. I mean? And we're, we're, of course, assuming all people have cards. So, does that kind of clear that up for you? Yeah. <laughs> um, another question. Cool. <laughs> Um, now, what what are their stipulations? I know they're pretty much, from what I gather, they say no guns and with a card. Now, does that mean, say, I'm a card holder, somebody else lives in the house, can they own a gun or possess a gun? Now, how does that go between the two people? It really doesn't say anything about a card and a gun. It goes back to the common uh, to the common DEA level of uh, firearms and ma- uh, manufacturing operations. So if you are a card holder and are just smoking or you know uh, treating yourself from uh, metabolism and such, there's nothing in there that says you can't actually possess a firearm. That's not true. Don't listen to Chad. <laughs> Let me tell you what it is. Here's, here's a problem: is that marijuana is still illegal under federal mm-hmm. law. Okay. So anytime you're a lawbreaker, you can't have a gun, yeah, period. Yeah, so sorry. in the federal government's eyes, and according to some people here at the state level, if you possess a caregiver or patient card, then you cannot have a firearm. You can't have it in possession, and you shouldn't be able to access it either. So having one in the home under the license or possession of another person who is not a card holder, legally it should stand up in court. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you that you're going to be fighting against uh, some really nasty federal policies. And again, these are federal laws. These are not state laws. So to try to bring this issue up about, you know, the firearms and having, you know, it is something that people are facing at a state level, mm-hmm. that's for sure. And you can better believe that if you're busted for marijuana in Michigan and you possess a firearm, you're going to be also faced with a felony firearm charge. Guaranteed. So it is something you need to think about very seriously. If you've got a card... For marijuana in Michigan, I'd recommend that you do not have a firearm uh, for legal Sorry, protection. I had a big brain for that one. Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> a very nasty, sticky issue. You know, if you, if you want to be a freedom fighting Second Amendment pusher, God bless you. I'm just telling you that I can tell you right now if you get busted for marijuana in Michigan, whether it's by federal, state, or county forces, and you have a mm-hmm. firearm, period, you're going to get a firearm charge thrown in with whatever else they're going to charge you with. So it's a decision. What about if you have a CCW? Well, then you need to get rid of that CCW because that definitely means you have a firearm. <laughs> I'm telling you, and this is federal law, okay? I can also tell you that the Genesee County Gun Board has approved people that are patients for CPL licenses, mm-hmm. okay? It does not mean that it's going to continue. It doesn't mean that they're going to do it over again. 
They don't have to do anything they don't want to do. But federal law, you are illegal. You cannot do that. So again, you know, if you want to just say, hey, I'm going to respect the fact that I have a U.S. Constitution and I'm not a felon and I should be able to have a firearm if I want one, well, God bless you. I believe you should too. I'm just telling you what you're going to have to go to court with. Bear mace works excellent. <laughs> Pepper spray, bear mace, you know. She was 20 feet down the hallway. Yeah, but even so, Chad, you know, when it comes to busting people for marijuana, mm -hmm. the DEA... Weapons, period. Any kind of weapon is going to be thrown back at you that you are using that weapon to protect mm -hmm. your illegal drug trade activity. And it doesn't matter if you had an ounce or, or 100 pounds. If you're in federal court, that's what you're going to be looking at. And the other thing is, is if you're in federal court, there is no medical marijuana card. Yep. You don't have one, it doesn't exist. Very true. And, and the jury that's sitting there staring at you isn't going to be hearing about it either. So you have to understand that when you go to court, especially federal court, you're in a whole nother world. And things will happen you never even thought possible. So I always tell people, look, if you're just a patient, taking care of yourself, you're not a caregiver, you probably are never going to have anything to worry about. But you're still going to be breaking federal law. So mm -hmm. you're going to have to make the choice for yourself. You have to understand... By you having a card in the first place, you're already breaking federal law. So I'm not telling you to be a, a law breaker, but if you have a card, you already are. Very true. If you have a card, you already are. So does that about that kind of answer for you? I know it's not a good good answer. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for the questions. Those are good questions. Absolutely. Thanks and keep up the good work. Hey, thanks for calling in. Jim? Yep. John, thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Yes. I thought I made your brain fry there for a second. Hey, that's okay. You know, and a lot of people get confused, Chad. You know what yes. I mean? It's, it's a very <laughs> well, tough issue, mm -hmm. and it's very, it's it's heartfelt for most people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This is a country, especially a state in a country where, you know, people are very vehement yep. about my Second Amendment rights. Yep. You know what I mean? It's kind of like freedom of speech or abortion or whatever the other big topic mm -hmm. issues are, you know, and, and firearms right now is a huge issue. So then you start talking about firearms and marijuana, which marijuana is a huge controversial mm -hmm. issue, and you might as well be uh, a prostitute priest. You know what I mean? It's just muddy water with thorns in it. You know what I mean? And it, it's, so it's not a fun subject to deal with. Mm -hmm. It's something, though, that I think has to be dealt with, and it's yep. why it should call attention to the federal people that can do something to change policy to say this is nonsense. Okay, you got people using a benign substance for medicinal purposes who are typically on deathbed or life-threatening situations mm -hmm. or life-altering illnesses, and you're telling them that they are probably not only likely disabled, but they're certainly enabled, or you know what I mean, by their disease, and they're not allowed to protect themselves because they're on a substance that's less toxic, less endangering than the substances that you dole out through the FDA, mm -hmm. and you don't take their rights away for those substances, but yet you're going to take mine away for this? Do you guys have People get pissed off when you start to think about that. And you know what? They should. Our federal policy needs to change in regards to the Second Amendment and marijuana. you got a problem with marijuana. You don't want to recognize it as medicine when it clearly is. And then you want to turn back around and say these people are extra felons because they're exercising the Second Amendment right for a substance that they need to keep alive. Question for you to think about. Stupid. Do you think, like say you're a cop, yeah. So you pull your back a little bit, shut your door too hard. Yeah. Oh, hey, Greg, go to the doctor. The doctor's going to give you some Percocet, some Vicodin. Now, are you supposed to uh, turn your gun in while you're taking those until you come off those, or you just oh, keep on going? Oh. Oh, so wait, you can actually... And, and then the other thing is people like, you know, the attorney, state attorney, oh. Bill Schutte, who said, you know, this has got to be taken care of, it's a major problem, has never said anything about the fact that you got people walking around with Oxycontins, Vicodins, and who knows what else, and and they didn't even consider the fact that, you know, there might be something. What about all the people that are on mood drugs? Yeah. Okay? You might want to start there, all right? Somebody loaded up on mm. some type of serotonin enhancer or, you know, antidepressant where they say right on the damn commercial may cause suicide. Okay, what about them? Why aren't you worried about them and their guns versus the guy who may eat Doritos? You know what I mean? Like, seriously. He's the last guy you're probably going to have to worry about shooting someone. He's probably not even going to remember where he put his gun. 
Yeah, if we, but if you eat the Doritos, if you eat the Doritos, and shit, I've got to pick that up when I bought the gun. You can't shoot Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> you can't shoot Cheetos. I got a cheesy poof to jack it. You, you know, gotta, mean, come yeah, on. I was going to say that if you're eating Doritos, <laughs> for Bloomberg, you're public enemy number one. You know, drinking pop and uh, eating Doritos, you're a public number uh, number one. <laughs> wow. They don't want you to do that stuff. They're, they're the nanny state. That's what it's becoming, the nanny state. They want me to do that, so I'll have to go back and buy some kind of prescription medication to supplement the nutrition I'm missing out from eating fetus pop. Yeah. All right, anyways, we're going to wrap up the show here. <laughs> fetus pop. Here, look at that Pepsi's new flavor enhancer. It's called mm. baby fetus syndrome. Okay. Mm. Uh, thanks for joining the show today. Thank you, caller, for calling in. That was an excellent question, and I really appreciate that kind of inquisitive yes. thought from our callers because it helps mm-hmm. us be able to answer things that we didn't know were still questions. Yep. And uh, that's crap that is long overdue and needing a change. And the more people that find out that, hey, you know what, that's bullshit, the more likely it's going to get changed. You want to know the one thing I just thought they can't ever take away from you? What's that? Yourself. <laughs> you. <laughs> Can become a weapon more dangerous than a gun. Think about that. Oh yeah, you could be like that one dude from the eighties movies. Why did like, want to do? His body was like licensed to kill. Yeah, I remember that. That's that's why it's one gun or one weapon. I'm, I'm sorry, one weapon. He had, like, they can never charge you for it. Four arms of lightning with with a medical card. Yeah. Now, if you're a licensed black belt, you kill someone. Obviously, they can charge you for it. But I'm just saying, what if you're a black belt without a license? Right, then Is that like a <laughs> CPB? <laughs> Concealed personal body protection? I don't know what that is. Maybe that's what we need to offer at the club. Yeah. Well, what if, what if my hands are like hands of death and I have to wear gloves? <laughs> like, dude, do you have a license for those hands? I'd be like, I don't, but I wear gloves. <laughs> it's okay, they're concealed. I know. <laughs> that's why I wear boots, too. You know. <laughs> I would kick the death out of you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us this show. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you, John, for being back there. And hit us next week on Wednesday. Yes. G3C Podcast. Check you guys later. Yeah.